Welcome to the Freedom Files Cannabis Corner Podcast. I am James Burns, and you heard that right, podcast, not podcast. I am joined by Kerry Burns, the host of the Cannabis Corner web show. He's also my dad. Kerry, today was a very historical event. Very historical, James. We have Congressmen Ron Paul and Barney Frank. They've introduced House Bill 2306, which ends federal uh, ban on prohibition on marijuana. I think this is going to be a really big deal. We need to really get people behind it. Uh, the ending the Federal Prohibition of Marijuana Act 2011, if passed, uh, the bill will end marijuana prohibition, removing it from federal scheduling under the Controlled Substance Act, and it enables the states to pass their own laws, regulations, and taxes regarding marijuana. And I think that this is a long time coming, and there's a lot of people really pushing this right now. Not only presidential candidate Ron Paul, but also you have uh, singer-songwriter Willie Nelson, normal uh, leap law enforcement against prohibition they even have a big petition out right now where you can go to their website leap.cc and send a you know kind of a pre-written letter to your congress critter you know telling them about uh, how they need to get on board and endorse and co-sponsor hr 2306 Kerry, why should people care about ending the marijuana prohibition well first of all the the prohibition on marijuana in the very first place was a bad idea from day one. It, it did nothing but cause trouble from the very day that it was passed back in 1937 with the Marijuana Tax Act and then updated recently in the modern day in the 60s with the Singles Narcotics Act, which led to our Controlled Substance Act here in this country uh, through Nixon. But the whole thing, marijuana had never hurt anybody, had never sent anybody to the hospital. It, it's one of the vital components in, a, in a, an industry, uh, the hemp industry, in the textile industry. And we killed all that. We killed jobs. We killed opportunity, all because we were worried about children getting high on marijuana. And there, there have been case after case after case after case, millions of people smoking marijuana for the last seven or eight decades. None of them have ever died from an overdose of cannabis. None of them have ever been injured from it. It, it boils down to a personal choice. And if we're not so concerned about the drugs like alcohol and cigarettes that do kill a lot of people every year, I don't understand why we have a law against a substance, which is basically an herb. It's an herbaceous plant that produces a flower top that people smoke. But I don't understand, and it's never hurt anybody, never sent anybody to the hospital, never killed anybody. I don't understand how we could possibly have any type of laws against a, a plant that is harmless. It just does not make sense. I mean, why don't we make tomatoes illegal? It would be the same thing. You would have a cartel that was trying to push tomatoes across the border, everything. I mean, it's that... It, it sounds stupid and that simple, but that's exactly how it goes. And we never learned from our prohibition days during the Al Capone days of the 20s when we had alcohol illegal. We didn't learn the lesson. And we turned right around and do this with cannabis, and we killed the hemp industry, which if we brought the hemp industry back today, you're talking about a new industry in America unlike any other, and this would be one that could put people back to work, literally put them back to work. But we're... I'm just so proud of Ron Paul and Barney Frank for finally somebody standing up and saying, hey, you know what? This is stupid. This stupid drug war has failed. This global commission that just released their report here a couple of weeks ago, they're talking about the failure of the drug war. And one of the things they emphasized was specifically was that cannabis needs to be legalized. And we knew that back in the late 60s, early 70s, when they first passed the Controlled Substance Act. We knew it was a bad idea, but the powers that be, they pushed it through. Despite federal judges telling them no, petitions from normal, and, and God knows everybody else in the last four or five decades have just been totally ignored by the Drug Enforcement Agency. Finally, finally, the people may finally have their chance. And Ron Paul, Barney Frank, I salute y'all, and it's this type of leadership that we need running our country. Ron Paul is making the step here. This is the type of leadership you look for in a leader to run our country, one that can make important decisions that are going, going to affect this country, and this is going to affect our country in a positive way. So I say to everybody out there, get on the Ron Paul revolution. Get on board with this H.R. 2306. This is a very important piece of legislation. It's not just about marijuana. It's about your constitutional rights. It's about restoring part of our Constitution that's been stripped away by a federal ban that was illegal from the day it was in, ever came about. Absolutely. 
And uh, another point is nearly a million people are arrested every year because of simple marijuana pro. Yeah, lives you know, ruined. Session. Yeah, just lives ruined. It's just it's terrible. Yeah, and, and, and it costed us, what, how many, you know, billions if not trillions of dollars over the past 40 years for this farce of a drug war. If we had just the money that we spent on the drug war and the, and the money we spent to house just the people arrested for possession of marijuana, not the 125,000 that died from AIDS contraction while they were in prison, not those. Those are gone. We don't have to pay for them anymore. Anymore. But the people that we housed, that we kept alive in prison for possession of marijuana, and this continual of upwards to 800 to 1 point, it went up to 1.2 million during the Clinton days, you know, per year of people getting arrested, 85 to 90 percent for simple possession. And if we had that money working in our economy today, we wouldn't be borrowing any money from China at all. No. China would be borrowing from us. Well, it's silly things like marijuana prohibition, the war on drugs that has gotten us into this situation. We've expanded the size of the government. We've created such you know, anti-constitutional police state groups like the DEA, the Drug Enforcement Administration, while at the same time we continue to dig the hole deeper and deeper for us. The founders you know, were all about individual rights. And the way I look at it as a non-smoker is you have as much right in the privacy of your home to smoke marijuana as you do to have a drink at the end of the day from exactly. a hard day of work. That's exactly right. And if you go, if you want an eye-opening experience, go to the Drug Enforcement, DEA.org. Go to their website and look at their agenda. It's on their front page. And right there in bold letters, it says, Target America. Mm -hmm. Now, come on, people. Yeah. This is targeting American citizens that choose to use a safe herb instead of a dangerous, debilitating yeah. alcohol use. Instead, that, that it's that simple, and and cannabis is safe. The, your brain is is hardwired to where you cannot overdose on cannabis. There are a limited number of receptor sites in our brain, and so that you're not a. It's not like alcohol and some of the other drugs that are that become addictive and all. This 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 one does not follow that right. pathway. But at the same time, it wouldn't matter if it was the most dangerous thing on the what, planet. It's an individual choice, and that's what the founders were all about. Right. I mean, that that's why I go back to. I mean, if you're going to make uh, marijuana illegal, uh, why stop there? Why not make uh, alcohol illegal again. Well, if you, Why if, not make cigarettes illegal? They're trying to do that. They're, then we can just say, hey, move on. Let's go make coffee illegal. Then uh, soda and candy bars. Well, Where there, does it end? There seems to be some sort of dream state that America's been in in the last 40 years since this drug war started because every, um, when you talk to Americans out there and just interview them on the street, not people that use drugs or smoke marijuana or anything, just normal citizens that you talk to and all, and you ask them, how many people do you think die from illicit drugs every year? They, they think it's in the millions. They mm -hmm. literally think that there are millions of people dying and that's why we have such federal drug enforcement and all that like we do because all these people are dying. And then when you tell them that less people are dying from all illicit drugs combined, cocaine, heroin, methamphetamine, all those combined kill less than aspirin overdose a year in this country. Yeah. They're, they're shocked. And then when you tell them that marijuana has never killed any anybody, they really don't understand them. Well, wait, well, why are we arresting people for yeah. that? Because alcohol exactly. and cigarettes together kill almost a million people a year. Yeah. And if we don't care about that, why are we worried about a substance that kills yeah. nobody and, does, and brings no harm to anybody? Why are we doing that? Is this, is this just so we can make the cartels rich and cause the murders of fifty to 60,000 people in five years down in Mexico because of drug cartel violence? My God, people, look at the human element of it. We're, we're talking about a harmless, herbaceous herb that when you smoke it, makes you feel good. It actually makes your brain, it enlightens you, makes you think. It doesn't cause you to do violent things. It doesn't make you want to do deviant things. It doesn't make you want to harm somebody. It, it it's a very, when you do it in a group with people and all, you, you, if you go into a room of people that are smoking and they're sharing a bong or a pipe or a cigarette or however they're smoking, they're vaporized or whatever, these people are laughing and talking. They're in discussion. There's no, there's no fighting going on. You go to a bar where people are drinking and all, and I'll guarantee you any bar in this country on a Friday and Saturday night, does not matter where it's at, there's going to be a fist fight, maybe several, somebody thrown out because of Yeah, but at the drunk. same time, we're kind of getting off subject right. here because the majority of the people they go drinking, you know, they don't get they don't no, get they violent don't. either. But, but I'm, what I was trying to say was that the marijuana does not promote violent no, no. activity. And I that, agree, I agree, yeah. it doesn't. But and the point here is, it's about individual rights, right. and individual choice, and Americans should be allowed under the Constitution and Bill of Rights. 
if we followed it correctly to where they could they, they would be allowed to smoke cigarettes and drink and do marijuana and whatever they want to do as long as they're not hurting somebody else in the process. That's right. And and the thing that the having marijuana illegal is is you are crippling the, the, the start back up of the hemp industry. And this is not the marijuana business in this country. It's not you're not going to make a lot of money off the taxation of marijuana and all that by making it legal. That is not the point that when once marijuana is legal on people are allowed to grow their own in their gardens, just like they do their tomatoes or their herbs or anything else. Once this happens, the price is these prices you see today are cartel prices. They're just like, you know, back in the Capone days, they were selling, you know, whiskey at 10 times the rate it would it would sell for even the finest whiskey. They were selling junk whiskey for, you know, 10 times that rate. It's the same thing here. Once marijuana is legal, there will be plenty of people able to grow their own and all, and the price will fall down. And so you're not – the tax base then is going to be – probably 90% less than what they're projecting right now with these illegal prices right now. But the true money to be made in this country, what's really going to put people to work and all is the hemp industry because this is responsible for over 50,000 products. And this could literally put millions of people back to work tomorrow if we would just get off of our cans in this country and do something like the brave Congressman Ron Paul and Barney Frank are attempting to do right now. I hope as Americans, if you, I don't care if you smoke marijuana or not, it, it does not matter. It's not, it does not it's not an issue of whether you smoke marijuana or whether you like somebody smoking marijuana or you don't like that somebody smokes marijuana. That has nothing to do with it. This is about our country, what our country was founded on, on freedom of choice and our Constitution. These, this drug war has been nothing but a leg iron and a debilitator and a shredder, if you will, of our Constitution. And it's got to stop. And we fund that. Federal tax dollars that we're wasting on a drug war could go to education. I mean, we have all these school districts that are having to fire teachers and cut their budgets and all. because Why? Because we don't have tax dollars to pay for them. Let's take that money that we're spending on the drug war, which is over $25 billion a year, yep. and let's put that toward education. Let's do it. Well, I definitely believe we can put it towards something better than this farce of a drug war. Why, sure. I mean... It's, it just comes down to the simple facts that it's, it's been too costly and we've put too many people behind bars that were nonviolent criminals. They don't deserve to go to jail. We have one of the largest prison populations in the entire world, and that, that's going up against China, which has way more people than we have. That's so and, true. And they're supposedly a way more authoritarian country than we are. That should, tell, that should tell people about what's going on in this police state. And it's all because of the drug war and mostly because of marijuana. I mean, even when you look at the videos of the Homeland Security uh, the, along the border where they're really they're pretending to look for illegal aliens coming in and all, that's really not what's going on. It's about stopping the marijuana because if you look at the, the videos, and those are pretty much across the board, a cut and dry example of what's going on, Every one of them are about illegal aliens smuggling marijuana into this country for the cartel. And we don't have to do that. They're, it's ridiculous. Mexico can play a very vital role in growing marijuana, not only for consumption in America, but also as a fuel, also in the hemp industry. And you could really get their industry going down there where these people that come here trying to look for work, they would have jobs back there. This industry wouldn't just be, wouldn't, it, this would be a global industry and one that everybody could contribute and benefit from. And we would also be able to uh, start our own hemp industry here in America. I mean, we have, we have 45 million Not Americans right now on food stamps alone. Yep. The unemployment rate continues to go up, and there's no end in sight there. There's no sign of any recovery. The only real way to do it is to find new innovative ways of bringing jobs back to our country. And one of the ways, in my opinion, is the hemp industry. In order to do that, we have to first get past this first roadblock of re-legalizing marijuana, then re-legalizing the hemp industry. That's right. And that's going to save us a lot of money. We can get a lot of these nonviolent drug offenders that are locked up behind bars out of prison, yeah. which costs us between what forty and fifty thousand dollars a year, depending on which state you go to. On average, it's at least fifty-five thousand, and it can be as high as sixty-five thousand. And on, it's around sixty-two-five is what the Justice Department issued as as their budget request for the. 2011 year they were requesting that per prisoner and if you look at the at the number of nonviolent prisoners in there this is a ton of money and money this is money that it, it'd be one thing if we were investing this money and that was bringing a return on the dollar but this is money that just goes out the window and we get nothing back for it 
and we have to turn around the next year and do it again. Exactly. And I over mean, and over. And, and we keep the hemp industry, which economists right now predict will be between the first year will be between one and one and a half trillion dollar industry. And, and guess what, folks? You know how you start the hemp, hemp industry? You plant seeds. That's how simple it is. We still have time to start a hemp crop in this country, even this late in the summer, and pull it off. But we could definitely start getting preparatory ready to make sure that we don't miss any more time. Why are we? it's that simple? There's no. It's not like we have to pump a lot of money into this, and we and the seed are available. There's, there's other countries that have been growing hemp for for decades. Canada, Canada, and the seed production's big time. Why aren't we doing this? It's just so insane. Well, this Why, because is, people want to smoke pot. I th- I think that this is if if we play our cards right, and if everybody gets involved and get active, I think this is going to be the first step towards a lot of things, a it lot of be. positive changes in this country, well, getting us one step closer back to the Constitution, back to freedom and liberty for all of us. Well, in this mentality of this police state, mm-hmm. I mean, the 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 people who are in charge and uh, and run the police state, they. They know that the people below them that they're oppressing are feeling the oppression because we're crying out to them. We have been for over four or five decades now, and they don't listen. No, they, they don't. absolutely shoot us the finger. <laughs> basically, it's basically what they're doing, <laughs> and and it's wrong. And and we have innocent people that are dying. That and and we're and all we're doing is funding gang violence mm-hmm. on the streets of America that doesn't have to even be there. We could have legitimate businesses that sold hemp products, that sold marijuana, that sold uh, fertilizer, that uh, organic fertilizer that you plant your marijuana, or the seed. Yeah. Or, or well, the, 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 the ideas it. can go on and on. on the and sky's on. the limit, basically. It there. basically is. But you're absolutely right. I mean, all the, the only thing that this uh, drug war has accomplished is expanding the size of the government, put us further in debt, and increase the size of uh, street gangs and drug cartels. Right, and, and marijuana t- use is up, too. Yeah, It hasn't stopped anything. No, it hasn't. I mean, that, that, here's the final point I want to make. Making something illegal does not stop it. I mean, no. they, prostitution is illegal. Right. But, you know, you still have prostitution going sure. on. You have gambling legal in some states, illegal in others, but that doesn't stop gambling. Dog fighting is illegal. Now, that's wrong. I don't, I don't agree with dog fighting, but the right. point is you simply can't hope to make something illegal go away by making it illegal well this you have three main issues working here well actually more but at the top first of all the constitutional individual right which is over you know this is what our founding fathers founded this country on and there's no gray area there you don't get to say oh well you get to accept for marijuana no that's not the way it works second of all we're preventing the hemp industry which could bail this country out that's that's just stupidity working there third of all we are funding cartel and drug violence, not only in this country, south of our borders and around the world. And this people are dying from this. And it absolutely does not have to happen. And on any level, it does not have to happen. And so those three main issues there, there's a whole bunch of more that fall under each of those. The police, you know, the end of the police state and all that. But those issues there are are the cause of so much problem here in America today. And if we can get that done, we will be on the road to solving a lot of issues. And Ron Paul is a visionary. I know he sees this because he, this isn't the first time that he's brought this up. Yep. That he's been pushing this agenda for quite some time. And it's because he can see the writing on the wall. A lot of people can, but there are a lot of people that have been brainwashed by decades and decades and decades of this hatred is what I call it, it's, because that's basically what it is, hatred, and they are ignorant to the facts. Thank you, Ron Paul. Thank you, Barney Frank. Please, everybody, write your congressman. Get on the bandwagon. Visit these sites. Get this going. This is our chance. And the uh, websites you want to check out is house.gov, a perfect place to go and find out how to uh, – Get a hold of your Congress critter. Uh, Write them, fax them, email them. Do everything you can. Get a hold of them and tell them, look, you want them to co-sponsor H.R. 2306. You can also send them a message via LEAP, uh, Law Enforcement Against Prohibition, uh, L-E-A-P dot C-C. That's LEAP dot C-C. And also with uh, Willie Nelson and Normal, uh, normal normal.org, N-O-R-M-L dot org. So take charge. Take charge. And and I'm sure there's a lot of other marijuana groups out there that we haven't mentioned. And we want all of y'all to get on board because this is what it's going to take. It's going to take this net working across this country to get people mobilized and 
there's 50 million pot smokers out there. Let's come out of the closet and do 